about some specimens which could be used for biology practical WIAC 2020. So, uh, clay soil, fissures of clay soil, it is grey or brownish in color, fine powdery and smooth when dried, sticky and muddy when wet, hard when dry. It has a higher proportion of clay, so the size is less than 0 0.002 millimeter. Has a little or no sand particle, has little air space. So, now the next specimen is fresh mushroom. Right, so this is a diagram, a picture of a fresh mushroom. So the features is that they are non-green plants characterized by the presence of pilus. So um, here is the pilus, so you have the pilus here, and then a gill at the very bottom, like under the pilus, you have the gill. So the gill is located down here. And then you have the stipe. So this structure here, which is white, here from here down here is is this type and then you have the eye face so down here the the rhizome is located here so this diagram is actually um, a from a mushroom eye face so then they have biological importance they are decomposers when I say decomposers, I mean they are capable of breaking down organic matters, making them into um, particles which can be easily taken up by you know the soil you know, to increase the soil uh, uh, organic matter. Then there are some are used as food. For example, a mushroom called shitek is an example of a mushroom that can be used as food. Then they are saprophytic in nature. That means they are capable of absorbing food substances. They are capable of digesting food substances and absorbing them from surfaces. And then we have uh, giant land snail. So giant land snail is under the phylum invertebrata. That's invertebrata means that they do not have a vertebral column. They do not have backbone. Then the class is that they are mollusca. Molluscas are more like soft bodied animals. Some have shells, like for example, you could see the shell here. It has a shell. And then it has uh, some fishes like the muscular foot. And then the habitat is that it's terrestrial, which means it is found on land. So this is a, a giant land snake. It's found on land. It's terrestrial. So let's look at the, some fishes. So some of the features that it, it possesses muscular foot for crawling, soft on segmented body, so the body is not segmented like that of insect. Then there is a the presence of calcareous shells. So you have a shell here, calcareous shells. Then presence of body covering called mantle. Presence of sensitive tentacles. So you, here you have the you have the sensitive tentacles. Right, they are very sensitive. So these are some some horological as well as some adaptive features of giant land snail. So it has muscular foot for movement. Yes, and then it has the sensitive tentacles for sensitivity. And then the next in the specimen is a transverse section of purple foot. So when I say transverse section, what I mean is that the, it was caught at uh, not from the top to bottom but actually from the side so you have a transverse section so the transverse section will give you a, a vivid view of the kind of placentation it will give you a great insight about the kind of placentation that the plant has so for the phylum of course it's a plant belongs to the plant kingdom then for the phylum it is spermatophyta, which means they are plants. They are plants with seeds. They are plants with seeds. They are actually 
and then the angiosperms. Then we have another classification, they are berries. Okay, they are berries. Then for placentation, the placentation is parietal. The placentation is parietal placentation. That's many seeds. And then for biological importance, it is an important source of vitamin C used in beauty product. It also serves as food for man and other animals. It is also it also has medicinal value, so which is rich in vitamin C, so it has medicinal value. Then this specimen is a transverse section of tomato fruit, so it was cut the same way and then showing you know vividly here the placentation. So you can see it is uh, it has low it has a uh, lobes lobulatus. So um, and then the classification is that uh, it is a it is a berry. It's a berry, all right. So now the placentation is that it is axial. It has axial placentation. You could see this stuff here, you know, some you know looking like rims. So this is the axial placentation we're talking about. Now this is the placenta. These are the seeds. Right, so attachment of seeds in the placenta is called placentation. So this one has axial placentation. Then, for the biological importance, it serves as food for man. Right, it serves as food for man. Then, mode of dispersal, explosive mechanism. When the tomato gets ripe to some extent, fully ripen, the the uh, it will burst. Releasing the seed, then for types of germination, it is uh, it grows with the epigeal germination. You have two types of germination. You have the hypogeal, especially for most monocots, and epigeal for most dicots. So monocots exhibit hypogeal, while dicots exhibit epigeal germination. Then for mode of propagation, it is propagated by seed planting so you get the seeds most times when they are dried and then you just put them on the soil so you know it's seed planting basically and then the next uh, specimen is the, is fresh okra fresh okra fruit so the mode of dispersal is explosive means it can burst raising the seed it can also be dispersed water by water and it can also be dispersed by animals so when animals eat the fruit they will drop the through their fecal matter they could drop this the seeds and then you know the the seed will start to you know grow and then we have biological importance it's used as food for man it has medicinal values so types of germination is epg germination like i said initially most dicots have epg germination so then for mode of propagation it is propagated with the seed all right so the next uh, uh specimen is the pride of barbados pod right so we're actually focusing on the pod like like what you are seeing here these ones these ones are the pride of barbados pod so for the classification they are legumes for the agents of dispersal dispersed by man is passed through explosive means then for the biological importance it has nitrogen to the soil so all legumes add nitrogen to the soil then it is aesthetic it has aesthetic value that that means it can be used to beautify the environment it can be used to beautify the ecosystem so that you know it has biological importance then for the type of germination this this does a pg germination then for placentation it has marginal placentation now if you get one of the pod you shake you see that the seeds are arranged at the side wall of the uh, pod so it has marginal placentation and then let's talk about the pod of cowpea so you could see that pride of barbados as well as uh, cowpea they are very related they have very similar characteristics they both have a uh, marginal placentation they are both legumes they both add nitrogen to the soil okay but one thing about pride of barbados is that the seed of pride of barbados is poisonous but that of cowpea is is used for food so for the classification is also legume mode of dispersal it is a true explosive means then for placentation it has marginal placentation as that of pride of barbados then 
for the biological importance, this uh, a good source of plant uh, protein adds nitrogen to the soil, serves as cover crops, prevent erosion, and suppresses the growth of weed. For the propagation, the, it is propagated with by seed sowing. Then for the germination, it has epigeo germination. Now this is uh, a specimen sh which is uh, lime juice. So. Uh, um, one thing that uh, could be asked in the exam is that uh, you could be asked to test for the pH of lemon juice. Now, what you do is take a you take a litmus paper, a blue litmus paper, put it into the solution, add it in the solution, and you turn to turn from blue to red. So from blue to red means that it is um, acidic. So lime juice is acidic. So this is a power juice specimen and uh, it's actually a food class. So what uh, I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to be testing for what food class this is. So quickly I'm going to add one meal of 10% sodium hydroxide. So this is one meal of 10% sodium hydroxide. And then I'm going to shake vigorously. Shake vigorously. So you can see that there is no visible reaction. And then I'm going to quickly add 1%, so a few drops of 1% copper sulfate. So I'm going to add it drop by drop. So maybe I add, you see that. There is an immediate color change. So this is a confirmation. It changes from colorless to purple. So this is a confirmation that the food substance here is protein. So it changes to purple.